Hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the J72 Gaming Channel. My name is Jacob, but you can just call me Jay here. Today we've got the third video in a series, which I hope helps you be able to grow your dinosaurs and reptiles a little bit easier in Ivrima. Since the map update has changed a lot about the map, and it now has folks populating the areas around the riverways, safe spots of yesterday may be changed, but there are now new safe spots able to be used. The series is going to include four videos, one to help each type of playstyle in the game grow, hopefully in a safe location. We took a look at the carnivores week one and the giant dinos last week. Today we'll be taking to the skies and safe rocks of Ivrima to explore the pteranodon and concluding with the herbivores next week. I hope this series allows you to gain a bit of understanding of the map, where people tend to congregate, and some areas where I found to be plentiful in AI dryos, bushes, and fish. If you like this series, please drop me a rating and comment down below, and remember to subscribe to join the Sauropod Squad. We also now have a Discord, and I would love to see you all in there. But with that intro out of the way, you all know what to do. Make sure you sit back, kick back, and go grab a snack as we get into today's video of 5 good growing locations for the Pteranodon in Isle Ivrima. Alright, so let's kick this thing off again, starting with a look at the popular spots on the map. Here you can see the main five points where you're likely to find players, and generally you want to stay away from others when trying to grow your dinosaurs. However, with our flying reptiles here, that isn't exactly the case. Sure, I mean, you don't want to be unable to land to get water, and you definitely don't want to be sitting on a rock that Utah's and aggressive dryos can reach. <laughs> Uh, but more or less, you're much more fine as a Pteranodon simply because you're able to take to the skies in moments of danger. So with that in mind, hanging out at popular spots can actually be pretty beneficial at times for the Pteranodon. As long as you pick your times to swoop down from a safe rock wisely, you'll potentially be able to snag some downed corpses in between your fish runs. I should also mention here at the start that no matter where you try to grow up as a Pteranodon, you will always have to deal with Dinos. The location for fish bring both of our reptiles to the fishing spot, and thus there will always be the danger for a growing bird. However, if you get some practice in, the fishing mechanic allows you to snag a fish quite quickly and safely, and those pesky dinos shouldn't be an issue once you've mastered your fishing runs. Knowing the good locations in the map is also an interesting thing for the Pteranodon, since they are able to soar across the map quickly and quite effectively. Very often I will be trying to grow at one of these spots on the list, only to notice that there is a severe lack of fish currently. When that happens, I simply adjust my approach and head out to another good spot. Since Dinosuchuses and Pteranodons both eat fish, it is possible, and honestly quite common, for a fish spot to be drained and empty for a while. Luckily, our Terras can go nearly a half hour before they need their first bite of food, allowing you to be at least half grown before you need to search out for food. And being half grown is sufficient enough to help you fly around the map with plenty of stamina to do so. Okay, so with all that in mind, let's take a look at my five favorite growing spots for the Pteranodon. First up is the spot I have mentioned countless times, and is likely the most common spot for Pteranodons to grow, and that is up here in the northeast at the Log Bridge Waterfall. Now, for some time during Update 3's beta and a bit afterward, this place was easily my number one growing location. However, over time, players have found out that Utahs and Dryos can actually reach the main perch rock that the Pteranodons were using. So due to this, I'm putting it as number 5 on the list. It's still an amazing location to grow, and the fact that you can reach the perch rock from one flight out of the northeast spawn spot is very handy. If you don't mind risking the chance for a Utah or just keeping your head on a swivel up here, it's still fantastic. This spot almost always has other Pteranodons hanging out, so if you're looking to join a flock, I would recommend heading here first. I very often landed here during my Terra lives just to see a flock chilling up at the top with a huge bounty of fish just loaded up on the rocks. A welcome sight for a traveling explorer for sure. The dinos down below should be mentioned here again, as it is almost guaranteed to be at least one hanging out down here. So make smart fishing runs while you're hanging out. A trick I like to pull on dinos who are sitting and waiting under the waterfall and fish spawns is to land just a bit away but within their vision to get a drink. Pretend you're clueless to them and, you know, start drinking. But take off just a short time afterwards. Almost every dino player cannot resist the chance of lunging at a pteranodon and they will often swim towards you, usually hidden under the water, mind you. Once you take off, simply fly to where the fish were and where the dino was and grab a bite to eat. 
A few Dinos have been quite upset at me for outsmarting them this way, and they will definitely let you know with their frustration with a roar. <laughs> Overall, this was my original favorite spot to grow a Terra, and honestly, I still use it despite the potential for Utahs to climb the rock. Use it with caution, and it should work out well for you still. Soaring the map out back over here to the west, we have two spots to touch upon. First up is the end of the Arch River at the River Crown. This spot is extremely quiet, and once you get your little fletchling out this way, you should have no issue staying safe on the rocks and cliffs of this spot. Like I mentioned in the Dino Growing Spot video, up here is a very secluded section of the map, and that goes for pretty much every species. You rarely see terrestrials up here, so it's a good growing spot for landlocked carnies and herbies, and dinos also rarely travel this far up since it's so far out of the way. So as far as finding peace and quiet in Isla Spyro, I really don't think you can do much better than up here. You can also use many different rocks along this river as a supplemental perch spot if the river crown itself is a little bit too hot. Now one thing I do want to mention if you choose to grow up here is that the spawns for fish seem to be a little bit hit or miss up here. Sometimes I've been up here and have seen huge schools of fish near the end of the river, as well as many spawns just slightly upriver around the first bend. The other times it's been bone dry, but because the spot is so hit and miss for the fish, I've decided just to put it up here at number 4. It's a good and solid place to grow your terras, but the next three spots just perform better, so let's get into them. So the second spot out west here, just around the corner from the River Crown, and no surprise that it is on this list to anybody I think, is the Giant Arch Waterfall Complex. This place is fantastic for growing pteranodons. Not only is there a plentiful amount of safe rocks, the view from the top of the main arches is nearly unmatched in the aisle. And you guys know I'm a sucker for a sweet vista view. <laughs> the fish here is likely the most plentiful fish spot on the map, honestly, with the main hotspot being down below the waterfall itself. A word of caution, however, the dinosuchuses of the aisle know full well about the large fish quantity. So just like the log bridge waterfall spot on this list, fish wisely and safely around these large crocs. The spot you see here in this spot is a good staging area to look around and get a fantastic scenic shot, but use it similarly to the other spots on the list that are not quite fully safe from Utahs. Now it's unlikely you'll be surprised fast enough for a Utah to pounce on you before you're able to take off, uh, but hey, a lazy or AFK Terra may just fall victim to such a fate. Another reason this place is on the list is that once you've learned how to manage your stamina as a pteranodon, and that means slowly gaining elevation, none of this look straight up and sprint into the sky nonsense, <laughs> with a gradual ascent from up here you should be able to reach any other spot on the map you wish to reach. Gliding from up here can reach the center of the map easily, and even glide all the way back to the northeastern log bridge if you stretch your wings on the journey just a bit. So while just third place on this list of good growing spots, it takes first place for the view and potential for an exploration launch. I like. Next up on the list is the Eastern Delta Swamp, and specifically the Swamp Rock. No, not the Swamp Rock that Venona has decided to call Swamp Rock. I'm talking about the actual rock in the swamp. Venona really needs to come up with a different name for what I call East Randon Rocks, but it's fine, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, out here in the Eastern Swamp is this rock just chilling and being majestic. Now why I like this spot is that it feels like your own personal outpost out here in the swamps. It's relatively common for other pteranodons to come through here, but finding fish here requires just a bit more knowledge and a tad of searching to find the good spawn spots. So let's get a bit specific here, as there are not really any spawns within eyesight from that rock in my experience, but there are three good locations around the spot to get your fill. First up is the most common and honestly kind of dangerous spot here along the Delta River, right at the entrance of that damn swamp. Here are a few perch rocks, again, ones Utahs are able to get to, and fish tend to spawn along the stretch of the river in plentiful amounts. So again, fish wisely and keep your eyes out for danger, and you should be good. The second spot is this isolated section of the swamps. This is the one of the best growing spots for dinos that I mentioned in the dino video, and for the same reason, it is still good for pteranodons. Quiet, relatively hidden, and full of fish. It's a great fishing spot for both of these reptiles. Feel free to use the Eastern Trinidad Rocks, or I guess I mean Volnona Swamp Rock, for a place to land and get stamina before returning to the Swamp Rock. Or I mean my rock in the swamp. Yeah. <laughs> Where can I sign a petition to change Volnona's locations names? I named them first. 
Okay, Volnona jokes aside, the third point of interest to fish from, the tall rock in the swamp, is the very secluded river out in the east. This river rarely, and I mean rarely, ever has anybody hanging out. Fish can spawn here, and since people barely come out this way, they're usually out here more or less. It seems, at least to me, that it's kind of a slow turnaround spot for the fish to spawn. What I mean is that they don't spawn quite often, but people are rarely out here, so it's still likely you're going to be able to get a bite or two out here. So while it's quite a hit or miss spot for fishing, adding it to the other two spots reachable from the Swamp Rock can be beneficial. Overall though, the rock in the swamp that isn't called Swamp Rock has multiple good locations around it, and the view up from the top is pretty grand too. Definitely worth checking out in my opinion. Okay, last and definitely not least is another spot I disagree with Volnona on the name about, but what I have always called Pteranodon Rocks. Out here in the middle of the map, it's my single favorite spot for Pteranodons. Now, Volnona calls this spot Perch Rock, so at least they agree with me that this place is fantastic for Pteranodons to perch at. What makes the spot great is the many cliffs and edges that only Pteranodons can reach. Safe and secure up high on the cliffs. Now I'm sure this location will be the main nesting spot for Terras once we get nesting in the upcoming updates. Safety isn't the only thing this spot has plenty of, because it is so close to the center of the map, it has access to all the action down below. Plenty of downed corpses of Tenos, Utahs, Carnos, Stegos, Dinos even. Man, you name it, you'll find downed corpses to try and scavenge from down in the death fields below. If risking your tail for some red meat doesn't float your boat, the stretch of the river also comes full of fish, who are usually spawning in large amounts to help sustain the packed spawn spot for the Dino players. So again, fish wisely and safely, and you'll be able to fill up quite easily out here. Now there are good perch spots along this river, and these are spots along the edge of the cliffs overlooking the river proper. Now I use these often to land and eat before grabbing another fish down below, but my all-time favorite location out here is in the middle of the Pteranodon Rocks. Down here in the cave is a few landing spots, and I will likely use this as my first place to attempt to grow a flock once nesting does come out. I mean, you get this entire rock feature to wander around on, safe from the terrestrials down below. And if you do see a terrestrial, well, they're down in what looks like an arena. So you may just get a gladiatorial arena show down below with your fish meal if you get lucky enough to see such carnage. So this spot takes the top of the list for me, for all the reasons I mentioned. It's got ample fish nearby, a high amount of safe spots to reach and perch on, and the spot is even named for pteranodons. Be it my pteranodon rock name or Volnona's less specific name of perch rock. <laughs> so go give it a shot, everybody, and try not to end up a splatter on the rocks when attempting to land on these perches. All right, everybody, that's my list for five good growing locations for pteranodons. How'd I do? Do you like using these spots as well, or do you have another hidden and quiet spot to grow? A quick honorable mention to anywhere on the Spiky River, as well as there's some rocks to perch on along the Delta River. Those spots are solid, just not nearly as interesting in my opinion. Also, try to avoid the Northern River where it's shallow. There's no fish to be found there at all. Playing the Pteranodon has easily moved its way up to my favorite creature to play in the aisle. Soaring across the map, learning how to perfect my aerial acrobatic skills, and tricking those giant crocs into freeing up my fishing spots has been an absolute blast ever since we gained them in Update 3. Chilling, vibing, and just relaxing as these reptiles has honestly been therapeutic for me at times, and many of these spots has helped me get extremely immersed in this dinosaur survival game we have. So while these spots have helped me grow my squawking bird to be big and strong, they've also helped me personally pass the time in peace and tranquility. Hope you all enjoyed this list. This series has been a lot of fun to make for us all. If you gained anything from this video, please think about dropping me a like and comment as it really does help push the video and the YouTube algorithm. And if you'd like to stick around for more dinosaur and the aisle content, please feel free to join us here in the Sauropod Squad by subscribing to the channel. I'd love to have you join the herd. Check out the other growing location videos in the playlist at the end of this video if you're interested and haven't seen them yet. And join our Discord if you like to chat with the squad there. But that's it for me, dudes. I hope you find success in growing your dinosaurs and reptiles here in Ivrima. But for me personally, I'm going to go back to vibing as a bird out here in the island we call home. Take it easy, y'all.